Today we're going to be learning about simplifying rational expressions with addition and subtraction. This is section 9.5 in the Algebra 2 book and deals with adding and subtracting fractions. When you're adding and subtracting fractions, you have to start by finding a common denominator. Now this is a concept that you learned about in middle school, 5 over 6 minus 7 over 8. We are going to be taking this a step farther, working with more complicated fractions, but first we're going to start with something that you should already remember how to do. Think to yourself, what's a common denominator for 6 and 8? In other words, what is a number that 6 and 8 both go into? Now you might think 48, but there's a smaller one. 24 is a number that both 6 and 8 go into, and that's the smallest number that they both go into. So that's going to be our common denominator. Now look at the first fraction. Originally our denominator was a 6, now it's a 24. So what did we multiply 6 by to turn it into 24 times 4? That means we're going to take that whole fraction and multiply it by 4, and the new top will be 20. On the second fraction, what did we take 8 by to turn it into 24? We multiplied by 3. And that whole fraction is going to multiply by 3, and the new top will be 21. Now that we have a common denominator, we keep the common denominator and go ahead and subtract the top of the fractions. 20 minus 21 is negative 1, it's over 24, our common denominator. Final answer. On the next example, think for a minute to yourself, what would be a common denominator for 5, 4, and 10? What's the number that 5, 4, and 10 all go into? 20. So my common denominator would be 20x. Now in the first fraction, originally our denominator was a 5x. We're changing it to a common denominator of 20x. What should we multiply by? 4. That whole first fraction multiplies by 4, and the new top will be 4. On the second fraction, the new common denominator is 20x. Originally my denominator was a 4, so what should I multiply by? 5x. That changes that top to a 15x. On the last fraction, original denominator was a 10x, new common denominator is 20x, what should we multiply by? 2. That changes that top to a 14. Now that we have our common denominator, we keep it, and we try to combine any like terms on the tops that we have. We have like terms of 4 and 14, they combine together to make 18, minus 15x all over our common denominator of 20x. On the next example, our denominators are originally x minus 3 and x minus 5. The common denominator will be the product of both of these factors, x minus 5 times x minus 3. Both factors multiply together. It is not x minus 15, that's incorrect, it is both factors multiply together. Now look at the first denominator. Originally it was x minus 3, now it's both factors multiplied together. What's the new factor for the common denominator that wasn't originally there on the first fraction? x minus 5. So that's what I'm going to multiply the first fraction by is x minus 5. That changes that top to 4x minus 20 after distributing. On the second fraction, what's the new factor that's there that wasn't originally there? x minus 3. So I'm going to multiply that second fraction by x minus 3, and when I distribute the 9, I get 9x minus 27. Now that we have the common denominator, we keep it. We just combine like terms together on the top. We have 4x and 9x that are like terms, negative 20 and negative 27 are like terms. When I combine my like terms together, I have 13x minus 47 on the top, and it's over my common denominator x minus 5 times x minus 3 on the bottom. On the next example, our common denominator again is the product of both of these factors, x plus 2 times x. It is not just x plus 2, it is not x squared plus 2, it is both factors multiplied together. What factor was missing on the first fraction that wasn't originally there? x plus 2. When I multiply that to the first fraction, I have to FOIL the top. x times x is x squared, x times 6 is 6x, x times 2 is 2x, and x times 2 is 
excuse me, 2 times 6 is 12. So when we combine that together, we get x squared plus 8x plus 12. That's what we get for boiling. On the second fraction, what's the new factor that we should multiply by here? x. That changes that top to 3x. Now we look for like terms to combine together. We have 8x and 3x, and we're combining these together, don't forget, by subtracting. 8x subtract 3x would be 5x. So x squared plus 5x plus 12 is our new top for the final answer over the common denominator, which is x plus 2 times x. On the next example, first we have to factor these denominators so we can see what the factors are. The first denominator is a trinomial, and we're going to use the trinomial method to factor this. What multiplies together to make 6 and adds up to negative 5? Well, that's a negative 3 and a negative 2. So my factors would be x minus 3 and x minus 2. Look at the next denominator. These are perfect squares. We're going to factor by the perfect square method. x squared breaks up into x and x. Negative 9 breaks up into positive 3 and negative 3. So the factors are x plus 3 and x minus 3. Now, the product of all of these factors is my common denominator. Notice that x minus 3 already appears in both fractions. I only have to list that once when I list out my common denominator. x plus 3, x minus 3, x minus 2 are all of the factors that I see in my denominator. And those are all the factors I need for my common denominator. Now look at the first fraction. What's the new factor on the first fraction that wasn't originally there but is now there in my common denominator? x plus 3. So I'm going to multiply the first fraction by x plus 3. Foil the top. x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. When we combine that together, we get x squared minus x minus 12 after foiling. On the second fraction, what factor is new that wasn't originally there on the second fraction? x minus 2. When I distribute the 5 to the top, I get 5x minus 10. And now I look for like terms. I have negative x and 5x, they're like terms. I have negative 12 and negative 10, they're like terms. When I combine my tops together, I have x squared plus 4x minus 22, and it stays over my common denominator, x plus 3, x minus 3, and x minus 2.